Entry 12. Something a little troubling has happened. Actually, it is not little, and I would rather not be troubled by it, but not knowing how troubled I should be, for now I will express it as a little troubling. I was concerned about this possibility long ago. I have had my subordinates investigate, and now things are clear. Jonathan Joestar has living descendants, and they are aware of my existence. I have sensed myself being watched for quite some time now. At first I thought it was my imagination that I was worrying myself over nothing. Perhaps my century-old paranoia had yet to leave me, but that was not the case. I am being watched. To be more precise, I am being photographed by an ability known as spiritual photography. Of course, it's a stand ability. In fact, in addition to the world, I have one other stand. I was told by Enya that its name is Hermit Purple. I write of my own stand so impersonally because, strictly speaking, this is not my stand. It seems this is the stand of the man whose body I took over, Jonathan Joestar. It also seems that Jonathan Joestar's grandson shares this same stand, or at least a very similar stand. A century ago, I was weakened, no more than a head, if I had not taken Jonathan Joestar's body If I did not have this man's life energy, having only so little myself, I could not have survived one hundred years at the bottom of the ocean. It was necessary, but now it comes at a price. Though I don't know the reasons, I think this body has some connection to Jonathan's descendants, like the bonds between parent and child. Jonathan's grandson, Joseph Joestar. His daughter, Holly Cujo. Her son, Jotaro Cujo. They are aware of my existence. By obtaining Jonathan's body and being pierced by the bow and arrow, I have obtained new powers. Hermit Purple. The world. This very process had an effect on Jonathan Joestar's descendants. Perhaps I should think of this as a blessing. Strengths and limitations are two sides of the same coin. One cannot be had without the other. Then, like playing the white pieces in a chess game, I will make the first move. The Kujos currently live in the homeland of Noriaki Kakyoin, Japan. Although he is considerably weakened by my flesh bud, that boy's stand ability should be more than enough to eliminate them, the Joestar family. They must be exterminated. Entry 13 Continuing from yesterday, when I realized I was being watched, I never thought for an instant that the gaze belonged to one of Jonathan's descendants. I had thought that by taking Jonathan's body, I had wiped out the Joestar family. I would never have thought that their bloodline would still remain in this era a hundred years in the future. To me, it seems like a completely different world. Irina Joestar, nay Pendleton. I don't know how, but it seems she survived that sinking ship and gave birth to Jonathan's son. She is quite strong-willed, as expected of Jonathan's wife. That woman was a constant hindrance to my plans from the very beginning. If not for Irina, I highly doubt that Jonathan would have grown up to be as strong-willed as he was. Far from it, he would probably have been another of my admirers. One more lapdog. Irina Pendleton prevented that. Brilliantly. In some ways, that woman was similar to my mother. She was noble, proud, like a holy woman, and beyond all else, foolish. Because she loved a man such as Jonathan Joestar, I cannot help but associate her with my foolish mother who loved my father. According to my investigations, the son of Irina Joestar, a pilot named George Joestar II, was killed by a zombie I made. Ironic. Or perhaps something like fate. No, perhaps it's an exaggeration to call it fate. Of the great number of zombies I produced, it isn't strange that the son of my nemesis would be killed by one of them. Perhaps any further descendants are nothing to be concerned about. They may not necessarily have the metal that Jonathan had. They may be surprisingly spoiled by this peaceful era, and rather cowardly. But one can never be too careful. Call it bullying, if you must, but I would very much like to settle things once and for all with the Joestar bloodline. As I am still not fully accustomed to Jonathan's body, I cannot pursue them myself. 
But I have ordered Noriaki Kakyoin to draw blood from their corpses and bring it to me. Joestar blood. I am certain it will be accustomed to my body. Entry 14 Speaking of which, ah, I had planned to chronicle this in the latter half of this notebook, but this seems like a good time to do so. Therefore, I shall write it in ahead of schedule. I would not carelessly forget to write it, but I, Dio, am quite familiar with the distastefulness of missing out on a good opportunity. Just as Jonathan Joestar had a son, and many descendants thereafter, I, Dio, awoke from my century-long slumber, and, both before and after I gained my stand, I made a number of children. Don't be alarmed. I, Dio, have offspring. From among the many young women who were offered to me as meals, there were some with, how should I put it, potential, whom I impregnated. However, I don't know anything about what happened to them afterward. That sounds irresponsible, but the truth is, it is not an established fact that I have children. It is possible that the women aborted the child, or that a mixed race of vampires and humans cannot be created at all, and they were miscarried much like my possible younger sibling. However, that was done with the body that I had still not adapted to, Jonathan's. In other words, human biology is profound. There is a great possibility that they were born as human children. It's likely they were born and are being raised somewhere. Potential promise. Put more clearly, malevolent strength. The more evil the woman, the more wicked she is the better a mother she will become. Cross, short-tempered, and fertile, without refinement nor manners, bearing a foul mouth and foul children. The more like that a mother is, the better she is. In other words, the less she was like my mother, the better mother she would be. That's what I believed. That a mother was better off not as a holy woman, but as a wicked one. Therefore I chose those women to mother my children. When such women were presented to me, I did not eat them, I did not suck their blood nor brainwash them, I let them go. Of course, the feelings of wanting children, of wanting a family or intimacy or such things, I do not feel these in the least. After growing up in that cesspool of a town, of a household, I could have no such feelings. I impregnated them because it was necessary, so I say, I created them tools so I may attain heaven, my children. They will not be necessary for decades, but decades are not so long to me. I am certain that those children, spread all over the world, will guide me to heaven. My only concern, my one worry, is that they did not only inherit my blood, but Jonathan's as well. Which of our legacies becomes more prevalent will surely alter how the future plays out.